Well, Australia Post has suspended deliveries indefinitely to hundreds of homes in Alice Springs after a series of allegedly violent attacks against one of its veterans' posties. Joining me live now is a country Liberal member for Breitling, Josh Burgoyne. Thanks so much for your time. Uh, imagine going to work every day uh, as a postie and being assaulted. Is, is that what's happened here? Well, this is the very real result of what we're dealing with here in Alice Springs. And obviously, we've been hearing a lot about our crime issues here in Alice Springs, the crime crisis that we've been dealing with. This is how everyday Australians, everyday Territorians are being affected now, basically posties. And I've actually met this postie um, out while she was doing her rounds, a veteran of 38 years being attacked by people in the street. And Australia Post have made the very difficult decision, but obviously the right one here, to protect their employees and basically say that in a certain area of my electorate, people that I represent, unfortunately, we will no longer be delivering your mail as a result of these incidents. One which involved a knife, another one which involved rocks um, being thrown and launched at this mm. postie. When it comes down to it, it's not safe for a woman to walk some of these streets in Alice Springs in the middle of the day? And this is... This is exactly, you've hit the nail on the head. It's so frustrating. And in some of these instances, it's been described to me that these were young people that were involved, people that should be in school. So when we, there's been a lot of talk recently about the Prime Minister coming to Alice Springs about the announcement of $250 million to deal with some of these issues. We need to just go back to the basics here. Why are young people that should be in school at home attacking in some instances our hardworking posties that are just trying to do their job? And I think if we're not dealing with these most basic issues as why young people, why in, in some instances young people aren't at school, how are we ever going to deal with the other issues that we're facing? And it's really terrible that this has basically led to a lot of people now, and, and obviously that poor postie in, in an instance actually went on stress leave last year because of an incident. They'd just come back to work and now they had to deal with another incident which involve rock throwing. So it's, it's shocking that this has happened and it clearly shows that the government here in the Northern Territory have lost control and there need to be, we've seen in Queensland, there need to be more consequences for people when they do the wrong thing because right now people are just acting with impunity. Well, just what, what is going on? Because this isn't an isolated incident. Action for Alice uh, documents this on Twitter every day. They've been shut down, down by Facebook. We speak to Darren Clark often on this program. Um, we've got reports of uh, 30 uh, youths hiding out in Kmart um, before close. When it closed, they did a lot of damage and stole goods. We have a super cheap auto being broken into through the roof. We have uh, a, a, an elderly resident living on her own who's broken into at night. A, a fly screen wasn't removed. A security screen was removed. So we can't just put this down to bored kids anymore. Exactly right. And when we saw huge changes to our Youth Justice Act in 2019, we're now dealing with a lot of the ramifications of that, which basically meant that some of those consequences were taken away. Um, breach of bail as an offence was taken away. We've heard about these very similar incidents occurring in Queensland, here in Alice Springs. We're dealing with it at a scale that's just off the charts. Our crime statistics have been increasing year on year for four or five years now. We need to see more being done. We've heard a lot about alcohol spoken about lately. We still have young people in our community that are out late at night doing the wrong thing. And that's really where the focus needs to be now. Mm. Um, how are we going to encourage these young people to go to school, to not do the wrong thing? And unfortunately, in some instances, there needs to be real consequences to deter people from doing the wrong thing. I mean, this is beyond. Like, isn't this just beyond like what government can do? Where are the police? What is the community saying? I'm surprised people haven't taken issues into their own hands. Uh, and, you know, that's not a call to arms by any means. Let me just be very clear. But we're talking about a town that is desperate now. You're losing tourists. You're losing tourists. You've had Qantas cancel flights. They're far less frequent. I mean, how do businesses survive? Well, this is, this is the, a very good point you make. We had the Deputy Commissioner come out just the other day and say that we needed an additional 300 police in the Northern Territory and we had an infrastructure deficit which needed to be dealt with with $500 million, half a billion dollars. These are things that have basically been ignored for a, for a long period of time. 
and the current Labor government have been in for six years. They've allowed this issue to get to a point now where we need some serious wholesale change to be able to turn these things around. And you're right, businesses are bearing the grunt. I've literally just got off a plane and the first message that I received when I got off was that another business in my electorate has been done over last night, a motorcycle mm. dealer, windows smashed, young people enter. This just isn't good enough. And we need to ensure that people feel safe in their own yeah. homes and that business owners can come in of a morning and they're not coming in to smash windows. But unfortunately, that's the reality for many people here in Alice Springs. Yeah, Josh, absolutely. And we spoke to Kerry Joy yesterday. I don't know whether you caught it, but he is a, a former policeman. He was a former policeman for 15 years in the Territory and in Alice. The things that he told us yesterday about the sexual abuse of babies, women, and essentially there being no consequences is just disgusting. So this has been going on for so long. You say the government needs to do, do more, and that is true. But from where you sit, do, do you have solutions as well? Oh, absolutely. Look, we've, in my own role, I've been writing to the Children's Commissioner about some of the incidents and, and some of the issues that you spoke about. We need, we need the cover to be lifted on what is occurring in our community. Once we acknowledge that we have the issue, then we can deal with it. We've still had a government... We're doing that every day, Josh, uh, here, uh, almost, here at, at Sky News. And I know, you know, it's not uh, local Alice Media, but the problem is now well articulated. Uh, and I don't mean this to be offensive, but do you need to do more than just write letters? Oh, absolutely. Every day, by speaking to you, by getting out there and calling on more to be done, inquiries. Mm. At the end of the day, what we need is a change of government here in the but Northern Territory. Listening? And that's what is we're... anyone listening? Well, I like to think that when I come on a national news, um, like yourself, and be able to speak about these issues, people are listening and people are starting to realise the need here in Alice Springs. That's why we've had $250 million pledged, but it's more than just money. We need to see real wholesale change on the ground about how we're dealing with these issues. We can't just continue to fund the same organisations that have failed us for a long time. Mm. A lot of people are now talking about this and I really do hope that out of all this talk comes real change. We hope so too, Josh. I really appreciate you joining us on AM Agenda uh, and forgive me for channelling the, the frustration of Darren Clark and people like Kerry Joy uh, through you this morning, but appreciate it. We've got to talk about it more.